All right, everybody. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about basically the development history of System Shock 3 thus far, what's going on with the game, and where we can expect to see development go from here on out. Uh, just to preface, I actually recorded an original news story about this. I wanted to give an update on everything happening with Other Side Entertainment, Underworld Descendants, continued development or, or updating, and uh, System Shock 3, more specifically, in the wake of some news that had just come out around that time. However, I sat on the video for a little bit because I had a feeling that it had been too long without any real new information about System Shock 3, and I was just waiting for some sort of new information or confirmation about previous statements made by the company to drop. Well, that happened this past week, about four or five days ago, when the company officially announced that they will be... It's actually unclear what they are doing. So let me just read you the statements released by Other Side Entertainment recently. So this is from the Other Side website. This is their official statement about what is going on with System Shock 3. It says, Tencent and System Shock. We are happy to announce that Tencent will be taking the System Shock franchise forward. As a smaller indie studio, it, has been oh, it had been challenging for us to carry the project on our own. We believe Tencent's deep capabilities and expertise as a leading game company will bring the franchise to new heights. Alright, well, this is a bit of cold water splashed in the face for fans because one of the sort of promising things about Other Side as a company was they're they're essentially looking glass studios 2.0 they have a lot of the same people working there they have the same design philosophy and ethos and it was very exciting for us to be like wow system shock is finally back in the hands of the people that created the original and helped to direct the second game this is going to be so amazing to see this company do something like this that was the excitement with underworld ascendant as well wow we're going to get a proper sort of underworld 3 where Arx Fatalis was an excellent iteration on the series, we're finally going to get something with the, you know, within the name of the series and, and with the original team behind it, or a lot of the people from the original team behind it to help uh, fulfill that vision. But much like with System Shock, the company really underwent some financial turmoil. So let's talk about the, the development history so far with System Shock 3. Night Dive Studios, who has done the System Shock 1 Enhanced Edition and ported the game into their custom engine, and I gotta say I played it recently, the, the Uber Enhanced Edition, where it's got modern resolution, they upscale the texture quality, things like that. It just plays wonderfully. It plays like a dream. It's awesome, and I don't think that it really betrays the feeling of the original game, and I'm hoping we're gonna see something similar with System Shock 2, although that game, and admittedly, it does not need as much of an update. But Night Dive Studios owns the System Shock IP, and it's well known that not only did they make the Enhanced Edition for System Shock 1 and 2, but that they are making a remake of the first game in Unreal Engine 4. And that's a big deal, and, and that's been in the news and everything like that. What also happened as a result of them owning the IP was they were approached, or hell, I don't know, possibly they approached Other Side Entertainment when Paul Narath founded it in about 2015. And they worked out an agreement to give the licensing rights for a System Shock 3 and even a System Shock 4, we're finding out now, to Other Side Entertainment. And so Other Side Entertainment has been sort of co-developing System Shock 3 and Underworld Ascendant ever since then, roughly. Now what happened with Other Side Entertainment, as I've discussed on this channel before, is that they had a, a publisher for... Underworld Ascendant, and they had, I think they said something in the area of anywhere from two to four million dollars, something like that. That's the numbers that have been sort of thrown around. Um, so they had plenty of funding for that, and then they ran a successful Kickstarter to raise uh, several hundred thousand dollars, or a few hundred thousand dollars, to help out with additional costs for the game. Well, what happened was the publisher at the last minute just dropped out, and they were left with nothing but the Kickstarter money to try and fund the project. So from 
a memo released from the company themselves, they explained that basically, except for, you know, very surface level stuff or something that, you know, or, or work that could be applied to multiple projects, they weren't doing anything at all. They said they largely weren't working on Underworld Ascendant for most of its development time. So for the two years uh, after the Kickstarter campaign, they basically weren't working on the game whatsoever. And then finally what happened in the last year was 505 Games uh, agreed to publish, and I believe they agreed to give them some cash infusion in order to help uh, develop the game and finish it. But I would not be surprised, as, as I've said before, if there was not some sort of stipulation like, well, okay, so you said the release date is 2018, so you've got cash for a year and you better release on the release date. And so they were forced to release uh, an unfinished game. It's, it reminds me very much of something like No Man's Sky, except where No Man's Sky, the biggest issue was they just they got locked into a deadline too early. Uh, Underworld Ascendant was really kind of attacked on both fronts because not only did they have most of their funding pulled out, but then when they did get funding again, they were locked into an extremely unreasonable deadline. So they scrambled to put together whatever they could in that time frame. And unfortunately, I think it it really soured the reputation of the company because if you look at, and, and if anyone remembers, the original review scores for Underworld Ascendant, they were just atrocious and people were essentially review bombing the game. I would say almost rightly so. It, it was a technical mess at the beginning and it didn't really live up to the promise of the original games. But regardless, uh, people sort of dogpiled that game. And unfortunately, what this meant was that the company was, fa I mean, its first major release was a huge flop and got terrible reviews and even if it made them some money it doesn't really matter because they needed to have that sort of goodwill from the player base and players at large moving forward to release um, other games so while this is going on underworld ascendant or excuse me other side entertainment now has to take resources that should have been dedicated to working on System Shock 3, and they essentially have to keep a small team afloat and budget out personnel and time and money in order to fix Underworld Ascendant. And much like No Man's Sky, they released several major updates that added quite a bit of content to the game and fixed a lot of the bugs and added features that were supposed to be in there. Not to the extent of No Man's Sky, but you know, we're, they didn't have anywhere near the, the capital coming in from a game like Underworld Ascendant. Well, Underworld Ascendant, or excuse me, System Shock 3 was being developed around the same time, and especially after Underworld Ascendant's release, System Shock 3 was in development. Well, what happened was the publisher, who had given Other Side Entertainment quite a bit of funding in order to finish the game, so they helped co-finance the game, put in about, I believe, $12 million. So it was going to be a much larger, more ambitious project than even Underworld Ascendant, rightfully so, because this this was going to be sort of the flagship IP that other side could sort of really have a good, solid release with and start to gain some financial footing and also hopefully, uh, you know, sort of repair their reputation. So they had about $12 million invested from Starbreeze Studios alone who knows how much other investment, internal investment, and, and private investment they had for the game. So it was looking to be a, a fairly ambitious project for an indie studio. And much like with the publisher before, Starbreeze had to back out. Now, um, if I remember correctly, the articles at the time said that it was sort of a mutual agreement. Starbreeze Studios was undergoing uh, investigation, possibly criminal investigation, inside of the EU, and other side not wanting to get embroiled in another huge financial disaster said, you know what, we'd rather try and publish internally. Uh, statements from Warren Spector at the time said that uh, they would have enough money to work on the game for a long period of time without necessarily needing a publisher and that they could potentially self-publish if necessary. So he was fairly confident at the time that uh, financially they would be able to make sure that they shipped the game. So. I think they were also interested in cutting times at the same time that Starbury Studios says we can't really be part of this project anymore. The only problem was is that they had to refund 
not just what Starbreeze was willing to put into the project, but anything that Starbreeze had already spent on the project. They were forced to refund that as well. So after the financial turmoil resulting from the extremely rocky launch of Underworld Ascendant um, and trying to appease Kickstarters and backers and everything and, and fixing the game for the next year, they were also they had also lost most of their funding for System Shock 3 from the main publisher. Now, the funny thing is, during this entire time, this was last year, 2019, so I think in February 2019, last year, um, they released the first teaser trailer for System Shock 3 at GDC. So this is after all the drama had um, occurred with not only the Underworld Ascendant launch, but also Starbreeze Studios backing out as a publisher and losing all that funding. So I think it was a little strange for them to be showing off the game all of a sudden. And perhaps the idea was that if we get the public excited and we get fans excited, it'll be easier for us to pitch to an investor. Um, this is actually the route that if you watch any behind the scenes uh, documentary about Bioshock 1, this is essentially how Ken Levine was able to secure funding for that game. Um, they basically made a sort of vertical slice of gameplay, little sort of teaser area for the game and uh, started showing it off at trade shows. And eventually they've got some publishers interested in it. and even publishers who weren't even interested before started showing interest because they finally got to see it. So this could have been the play that they were making, um, but I do find it strange, given what's happened recently with System Shock 3, that they would even take it to GDC and start announcing it. Uh, another oddity is that after, a little bit after the release of Update 4, which is the final update for Underworld Ascendant, and I may get into that in this video or maybe another video, after the basically the finalization of what Underworld Ascendant would be, where the studio said that they're not going to commit many more resources other than basic bug fixes for console releases and stuff like that. Uh, they made a statement that Update 4 would be the last content added to the game um, and that that was sort of the finalization of the product. But shortly after that, in September of 2019, they released a quote-unquote gameplay trailer for System Shock 3. Basically, it showed off some first-person perspective stuff. It showed off some in-engine um, assets and stuff like that. I think you even see the player character holding a wrench and then some sort of gun at one point and basic movement through the environment. You don't see any interaction with anything. You don't see any actual gameplay, and it's incredibly short. But I also find this odd that they would show this off we're, we're not that far removed from September 2019. I mean, I know we're at the tail end of May here, but things have been bad since... We've been hearing bad things since March. So in just a few months past, you know, mid to late September, so just five to six months afterwards, the entire nature and, and livelihood of the project has seemingly totally changed with other sides. So this is very, I, th I also found it very odd that if the game was in that much trouble or financial turmoil or the team was having that much trouble that they would even show off anything at, I don't remember what the, the show was, but I do remember that they released on YouTube and I think they showed it off at some sort of trade show, uh, the quote unquote gameplay trailer for System Shock 3. So things with other side were very quiet after this up until about February of 2020, when news that Other Side Entertainment had laid off most of, if not all, of the major System Shock 3 uh, design staff and most of the team um, had surfaced. This is an article from February 9th, 2020 uh, by PC Gamer. It says, Other Side Entertainment layoffs leave the future of System Shock 3 in doubt. So basically what happened was some layoffs ha happened and um, a number of employees, including I think one of the lead designers, got onto the other side forums and the RPG Codex to talk about what was going on. So the article says, as VGC reports, design director Chase Jones left other side last week, joining other key staff, including, quote, System Shock 3's writer and director, senior designer, lead programmer, QA lead, senior environment artist, and more. Also goes on to say that uh, someone posting under the name Kin Corn Karn uh, at the RPG 
uh, Codex Form, a former Other Side developer, responded to a question about whether System Shock 3 had been abandoned by saying, quote, I don't actually know what's going on, but the team is no longer employed there. They also explained that, quote, most of the work is content development, which we were critically behind in, both in real assets and tool support for an efficient pipeline. Quote, was the failure of the project right? It's hard to say. If Starbreeze hadn't gone into crisis, I think we would have delivered something interesting with some fresh and innovative gameplay, but a much smaller game than what people were expecting, and inevitably disappointing for a sequel to such a beloved fr franchise. Quote, those high expectations drove a lot of expensive experimentation. We were a small team and knew we couldn't compete with current immersive sims in production quality and breadth, so we had to be creative and clever and weird. And we were on our way to make something unique and possibly fun, but probably not what the audience was hungry for. So this article was very interesting to me because it seems like System Shock 3 was sort of suffering from the same issues that Underworld Ascendant was suffering from, namely that because they did not have the team size or the the resources, both financial or, or manpower or equipment or technology, they could not do what they really wanted to with the project or what they had envisioned they could do with the project. What they were doing was they were just trying to do the best with what they had, given the resources uh, available. And this was the downfall of Underworld Ascendant because I think considering what they what they shipped, if you if you take into consideration the size of the team, the amount of money they had to work uh, with to develop the game, and uh, the time that they had to work with in actual development, real development of Underworld Ascendant, I think it's quite impressive what they were able to do. It's not a bad game, it's pretty fun, and I think if it was marketed more as a pure indie game and not really a sort of return to form for immersive sims having to compete with titles like Prey and Dishonored or Deus Ex, I think it would have done much better, but unfortunately if you go back to Other Side's YouTube channel, you can see a lot of their prototypes for systems that they wanted in the game, um, certain types of destructible environments, a complete host of or a complete cast of interesting enemies and creatures to discover in the in the abyss. All sorts of interesting mechanics like the prototype trailer where uh, she directs the flow of lava to keep the rooms illuminated to blind the uh, cave beast thing, tricking the spiders out onto the bridge and then destroying the bridge. They talk about all sorts of story-based gameplay as well and how things that you do in the environment will have a, a large impact on the story as well. He talks about, you know, maybe destroying a bridge to stop an enemy advance. Uh, will then give you a quest later where the dwarves will help you rebuild the bridge um, or they'll be mad at you because it was a, a main source of trade. It was a main sort of trade route and commerce route for them. So they may be pissed at you for that. They talked about all of this stuff and implementing all these features and the game is very, very superficial when you compare it to those sort of uh, design criteria and a lot of the things that they were hoping they could do with the game. And... My initial impression when they laid off this team, and I'll get to some statements in a bit here where they talk about what they, what else they might have been doing, was that maybe they were retooling the game and saying, okay, we need more money, we need more people, and we need to start from scratch, essentially. There was also rumors that they, they had said, you know what, Unity is just too limited, it's not working for us, and we're not happy with it, we would rather go with Unreal 4. But as of February, that was the last that we heard that the entire design team had been laid off. Now what happened after that, so there was some murmurs and rumors about what might be going on from other side throughout the month of March, but nothing really official. So we didn't hear much about System Shock 3 uh, until around April when a VP for marketing, Walter Sommel, got onto the other side forums and started talking to people. It was covered in this Eurogamer article here, System Shock 3 developer Other Side responds to confirm it's still here. A representative of System Shock 3 developer Other Side Entertainment has broken the company's lengthy silence, telling concerned fans on the official forums, we're still here. Despite rumors earlier this year that the team behind the third System Shock game had been laid off from Other Side's Texas studio, a VP currently employed at the company implied the game was still under what? I think that's a typo. By intimating development had shifted to, shifted to Unreal Engine 4. Quote, we're still here. We're all working remotely right now, probably like most of you. Quote, 
said the company's marketing and business development VP, Walter Sommel. In a form thread talking about the rumors of recent layoffs, Somol added, Our new concept is coming along nicely, and we're very excited about it. We have a cool and we think distinctive art style for it, and we have that and gameplay coming together in UE4. I know it's a tease, but I just can't really say anything about it at this point. End quote. Quote, I hope you're all staying safe and healthy in these unfortunate times, maybe even gaming more than usual. I know I am. As VGC quite rightly reminds us, Somal works for Other Side's chief studio in Boston, Massachusetts, and not the Austin studio where the System Shock 3 was reportedly based. At the time of writing, the company's official social media re feeds remain dormant and haven't been updated for several months. Okay, the article goes on to say basically what we talked about before about former Other Side employees talking about how the game was critically behind, not what fans expected, and that they were no longer employed for the company. So I also find this weird that they would send the VP out to... It's not as if fans are giving money on Kickstarter right now. It's not as if uh, anticipation for System Shock 3 is fueling Underworld Ascendant um, sales or anything like that. So I find it an odd move for them to authorize this guy to go out and talk about the fact that they're still there. Now, this is sort of an interesting thing right now, what he talks about here. Well, let's get into some more of it. So... Around April 30th, uh, about two weeks after Walter made this post, he makes an entire uh, forum thread called Walter signing off. So OSC Walter posts, uh, the first post in this thread, Hi folks, today is my last day at Other Side. This is bittersweet news for me. It's a great team here of awesome and talented people that I will miss working with. On top of that, I'm really excited about the new project the studio is working on and will eagerly await more news about it. With that said, the studio is mainly focused on game development now and has less of a need for someone like me, at least for the time being. I'm moving on to a new opportunity that I'm really excited about, hence the bittersweetness. More about that another time. Thank you all for being and remaining our fans. Alyssa, who has popped into the forums and Discord recently, will be keeping you all updated going forward, particularly in the near term on UA Kickstarter fulfillment. Keep gaming and stay healthy and safe during these times, Walter. So again, it's strange that he would get on to sort of reassure people that the company is still working on stuff and that they're still there, and then yet he leaves the company roughly two weeks later and gives this uh, farewell address to the people on the forums. So that was all we had heard. Now, I remember at the time that this came out, I had speculated that they said, oh, we're focused on game design, That, and he said that we are shifting to Unreal Engine 4. I thought that this was in reference to System Shock 3 and that they were simultaneously working on a new IP, which he discusses here. He says, um, I'm really excited about the new project the studio is working on and will eagerly await more news about it. So uh, it's been confirmed, I think, in another forum post as well from other other side employees that they are in fact working on a new IP, a brand new IP, as well as System Shock 3. But I assumed the switch to Unreal 4 was a decision for System Shock, as um, a lot of people complained about Underworld Ascendance, use of the Unity engine, and the sort of wonky physics and other things that go hand in hand with Unity games. And I was really hoping that, oh, okay, maybe one of the reasons they laid off their team is they're going back to the drawing board. Another thing popped up around the same time. This is also in the forum posts. It comes from a Reddit post by someone who claimed that they were a former Other Side employee and that they wanted to, quote, remain anonymous. But at one point, they were close to the situation, so you can either believe this or not. And this is in the thread layoffs at Other Side from the Other Side forum. It says, quote, I can't provide any sources or proof because I want to be anonymous, but I was at one point close to the situation. You can either believe this or not. Basically, there is no studio developing the game, but there is still a core team that still exists. But they're more like publishers or IP holders at this point. I'm not sure the extent of who or how many remain, but it's my understanding that they're higher level producers slash designers. They're looking for a co-developer, a studio who can provide programmers, artists, QA, etc, etc to get the game made, while the remaining guys provide design and other direction. Code development isn't uncommon in the industry, and I don't have enough details to know if they could ever get the project off the ground. It depends on things like profit share, who eats the cost, and whatnot, but that's pretty much where the game is now. I'd say it's more or less in limbo or arrested development. Again, this was reposted on the other side forums, 
and originally comes from a post on Reddit, once again by someone claiming to have been close to the development of System Shock 3. This was the last that we had heard about everyth everything. This, once again, was around April 18th, April 19th, as were most of the other major leaks. So this is what we had known up until that point, the end of April, which is when I recorded the video. I speculated that what this guy said, who could, again, this is, this is um, unconfirmed that this guy has anything to do with other side or, or knows what's going on. So this is editorializing here, but I think what he says makes a lot of sense. It could have been that in order to avoid another disaster like Underworld Ascendant, where the game didn't really meet people's expectations for what they had shown off in prototypes, what they had talked about the game eventually being, just in terms of technical reliability, the game didn't deliver in any of those fronts, and, and more importantly, it was sort of a superficial shell of what they had kind of eluded that the game would be. They didn't make any real stiff promises, but they did elude that the game would be a lot different than what it turned out to be. System Shock being much more of a tentpole franchise to Looking Glass, to Immersive Sims, and to uh, having a much wider appeal and wider audience. At the time, I was thinking, this makes sense. You know, they want to make sure that this game is done right. They want to make sure that they have the resources to do it properly. Um, and they do not want to disappoint fans with something that is undercooked or underdeveloped. So this made sense, and it made sense that they might have been retooling everything for Unreal Engine 4 and that they just wanted to take the game in a different direction. And until they found some extra capital to really fund it the way it needed to be, they had to lay off most of the design team so that they could keep costs low while they retooled their, their vision for what the game should be and while they found a partner. Now, here we are today. Uh, May 25th. Now, the news did come out around May 19th, I believe. Or, excuse me, May, May 19th, May 20th. So, here we are, and we got the update from Other Side Entertainment about the involvement of Tencent. And I'm just going to read those statements again so we can sort of pick them apart because now we're up to speed with everything that has happened thus far. It says, We are happy to announce that Tencent will be taking the System Shock franchise forward. As a smaller indie studio, it had been challenging for us to carry the project on our own. We believe Tencent's deep capabilities and expertise as a leading game company will bring the franchise to new heights. All right. So this is extremely vague, and that's the problem. It's unclear, and... and all over the forums, people have been asking uh, the community manager, could they please be more specific about what this means? Based on what the person who posted on Reddit said, based on what parts of the other team had said, as I said, it would make sense that they would want to partner with another company. You know, if, if I were in other side's position, I would say, hey, you know what we could do at our home office is we could come up with story, we could come up with artwork, we could come up with dialogue, we could do a lot of the voice acting and stuff that we want in the game, we could come up with gameplay mechanics and test them in the engine that we're working on for the game so we can test mechanics, we can test uh, systems, we can test uh, immersive simulation elements. We can do all this stuff here at the office, and then once we have all the experimental stuff figured out, we can send it to a team of programmers in a studio we're co-developing with who have a lot more manpower and resources to do sort of the grunt work of the game design. And it's much like what one of the uh, former other side employees said. He said we were really behind on things like asset work and things like that. So he said, you know, in terms of systems development, we had done a lot of stuff and we were really creating something interesting, but most of the basic assets for the game, most of the basic coding for certain things or, or testing, scripting, and things like that just hadn't been done, and we, they just didn't have the money or the people to do it. So it makes sense that they would call in a, a studio to sort of either outsource work to them, the, the sort of game development grunt work, or co-develop with them to use their, their manpower pool to say, okay, do you just take care of the sort of offload, the, the heavy labor, and we will do the, the sort of... Uh, more design-based stuff. 
So actually, I, I wouldn't necessarily be against that, uh, that sort of arrangement at all, because it means that ultimately other side is still in control of the game. They still have the reins. And ultimately, the game design is going to be coming from other side. And I, once again, I would be I would be mostly okay with that. The problem is the way that this new uh, release, this new press release, is worded. We're happy to announce that Tencent will be taking the System Shock franchise forward. That statement right there. I mean, it's like reading the goddamn Constitution. Uh, that statement right there is kind of like, well, this sounds like you're signing away System Shock to Tencent, and. That's very troubling because it's almost as if this studio that has no real affiliation with the franchise, no real affiliation with the genre, no real affiliation with Looking Glass or Other Side or anything, is just going to be developing it in order to make a quick buck. And that's very, very troubling. But then it says, as a smaller indie studio, it had been challenging us for challenging for us to carry the project on our own. Okay, this could imply that they, they no longer want to shoulder the burden by themselves, but rather than offloading it or, or opting to share the burden, we believe Tencent's deep capabilities and expertise as a leading game company will bring the franchise to new heights. This could just be saying, we're happy to have these resources available to us. Now, I did some digging into Tencent. So Tencent is basically a Chinese government-owned large multimedia conglomerate. They do a ton of stuff, but basically if it's media, Inside of China, Tencent basically has their hands all over it. And they have been making a lot of acquisitions in the Asian and American gaming market and European. So they now own part of U Ubisoft. They own uh, a substantial, I think, 40% uh, share of Epic Games. And that's how the Epic Games store got started and all these other things. They own a significant share of things like uh, PUBG. Um, and Fortnite, they own, they outright own the studio now that does League of Legends. And they have a smaller, like, 10 to 15% holding in a ton of other gaming companies. So, again, this is not really clear because from that it would seem as if they are an investment firm. And that's primarily how they do things. They, they buy interest, they, they buy shares they put investment capital into projects. So that would seem to suggest that, oh, great, uh, Tencent's just the new investor for System Shock and will probably help them publish. It does not mean that Tencent is developing the game. Unfortunately, though, uh, in recent years, uh, Tencent has opened their own game studio for development. And once again, typically this is used to co-develop stuff with other people, but more recently, they are trying to get into wholesale development of games, and they have shipped a few titles, mostly mobile titles at this point, but who knows? Another thing that's very unclear is the reporting on this, so let me just read a couple of the headlines for you here. This is how difficult the news is to decipher, the, the, the press release from other site is to decipher. None of the news outlets reporting on this can seem to agree about what the hell is going on. Eurogamer.net, System Shock 3 dev confirms Tencent will be taking the franchise forward. And Gadget, Tencent is taking over troubled RPG System Shock 3. GameSpot, System Shock 3 is moving forward with Tencent's involvement, not takeover, not complete acquisition, involvement. Then PC Gamer, Tencent officially takes control of System Th Shock 3. By the way, I've read all these articles. They are all based off of the same two-sentence press release from Other Side Entertainment from Alyssa, their community manager. Warren Spector has not said anything. Paul Nerath has not said anything. It's unclear if they're still attached even to... Well, it's unclear if Warren Spector is even still attached to the company, let alone the project. But, all right... Look at this one. Bloody disgusting. Other side potentially teeming, potentially teeming with Tencent to save System Shock 3. All right, that, okay. Officially takes over from PC Gamer and potentially teeming. 
just look at the fucking ridiculous in this in this journalism it's fucking awful okay ign africa system shock development transferred over to tencent once again nobody has an inside scoop here it's all based off the same two sentence tweet and press release on other side's website this one is even more uh explica plot twist Tencent takes System Shock 3 development as top investor. Okay, are they taking over development? Or are they investing in it? This is what I'm confused about. Because no one really knows. Everyone's just going with their best guess. So just out of pure curiosity here, we're going to read this bloody disgusting article and figure some stuff out. If maybe they, because this is updated. Alright, here's the whole article. Oh, it's been the big unknown for other side entertainment and System Shock 3 with what with the staff being laid off and other sides Warren Spector still searching for a publisher after having bought the rights back after Star Breeze imploded. There appears to be a glimmer of good news for the developers and game, however, Video Game Chronicle reports that SystemShock3.com and SystemShock4.com domains are now owned by Chinese company Tencent which is supported by the domain profiles on domain tools as of April 13th. Neither site is currently active, however, and other side uses a different site to share development news on System Shock 3. This might be a strange coincidence, but nevertheless, it's something in the form of hope for System Shock fans. Meanwhile, Night Dive System Shock Remake is still coming along, though the team hasn't had an update since March on the development. All right. And so that was the original article published on the 19th. They updated it on the 20th to say, update, other side has confirmed that they've teamed up with Tencent for System Shock 3. This is what I'm, it, it's so vague. And Bloody Disgusting has concluded from the same blurb that I just read to you from Other Side Entertainment, that it does not imply that Tencent is taking over development or taking over the licensing rights, but rather that they are splitting it with other side so to editorialize here what i think is going on what i hope and pray is going on with my fingers crossed is that they did not completely offload the project i'm hoping that that it's exactly what they said they were that the guy from reddit said was the thinking is that they're going to stay on as design leads and they're going to be experimenting with mechanics and systems in other side Boston while shipping the legwork, the grunt work over to Tencent to use their manpower and money to be able to get it made the way they, they want it to. I find it hard to believe that other side would spend so much time trying to get the band back together, try and get access to their old IPs again, like Underworld, System Shock. I'm sure they've even had talks with Square Enix about Thief at some point. And try and make these games again and even get started on production of them. And and as it said, you know, Warren Spector has been trying to shop around System Shock 3 for a publisher. So I find it very hard to believe that they would just randomly make the decision like, no, we're going to throw all our eggs in the brand new IP basket that we're working on that no one knows what it's it, what it is. And we're just going to completely abandon System Shock 3. Plus, how would the fans react to that? If you knew that Warren Spector and Paul Narath and Tim Stelmach and all these, the diehard fans, if you knew that they had access to make a new System Shock and then they just said, ah, screw it. Uh, it seems like a lot of work and we're, we're dealing with some bullshit. We'll just offload it to the Chinese. I think people would be pissed. I think people, because, you know, they're not going to understand a new, a new, it's not about them being Chinese. I'm talking about a new studio, a new studio that is primarily uh, an acquisitions and investment company that has done a few mobile games is not going to really out, un understand what fans are expecting from System Shock 3. So another thing that's interesting is that these domain name purchases have been in effect since mid-April, right? The news from... Other side has been in effect since five days ago, almost six days ago now. So typically when things like this happen and a new company has, you know, control over an IP and they've purchased it from the other company, you start to see dismantling on the official website. Now, other side has been slow to update their official website, but 
It just seems weird that they would still list System Shock 3 as their game and still have all the information about it and screenshots and everything if they were completely offloading it to a different developer. So it seems more likely that they are in fact sharing development or co-developing it with Tencent. Additionally, Tencent doesn't own the IP. The, the best that they could hope to do is just retain licensing rights for 3 and 4. And I think if other side did have the money that they said that they had to keep working on other projects and if they have the money to keep developing their new IP, why relinquish control, complete control, over an IP that they, they know, that they helped establish, and that will help save the company if it's even moderately what fans want, you know? So it doesn't really make sense. I said this before, the, the stupidest thing that they could do is relinquish control of their IPs. And I don't necessarily think that's what happened. That's what's happened. I think they are sharing licensing rights with Tencent in order to co-develop the game. I just hope that Chinese government bullshit does not get in the way. Although I have heard reports that so far Tencent has tried to take a sort of laissez-faire approach to games that they get involved with. They don't put too much pressure, but then they have been actively involved with Activision and Blizzard, and we've seen some bullshit censorship from Activision, or excuse me, from Blizzard recently for, you know, gaming competitions and, and free speech and things like that. So I don't know. I mean, I'm a little uncomfortable with this, and I just think that other side needs to be a little bit more clear about what this means. If, if they're no longer working on System Shock or if they're co-developing or what, what the hell is going on. But I really think it makes more sense that they would be co-developing and they would be sharing profits and they would be sharing royalties and they would just be saying, hey, you know, we need to do this right and we don't have the money or the manpower. We need to team up with somebody else. So hopefully that's what's going on here. Yeah, as I said, everything on the other side, site seems to indicate that they still have something to do with System Shock 3 and that they haven't unloaded the franchise it is still the first thing you see when you go to their uh, page. It's the first thing that pops up is System Shock 3. So this could be the best thing that happened to System Shock 3 development or the worst thing. I have no idea. And that's really what's troubling right now. Ultimately, it's, it's frustrating what has happened with this company so far and... I gotta say, I'm, I'm a little disappointed in the fans for the backlash that they gave. You know, some people sort of feel that if they gave like 30 bucks on Kickstarter, they're entitled to basically bully the company and demand, you know, the sun from them just because they gave them a little bit of money. I mean, and, and the other thing too is no one seemed to stop and say like, wow, you know, Underworld Descendant really had some cool stuff going on. Like, what happened? You know, they, they issued a press release and stuff, but instead of people saying, like, you know what, I'd like to support this developer, because there are so many other games that come out in a horrible, buggy state, and they don't get nearly as lambasted, or they still make enough in sales to just make money, like Assassin's Creed Unity and stuff, you know? It's... And there's so many games that come out with just no soul and no heart and no depth, and they do just fine. And you had a game from a company that, you know, it was missing a lot of features, but there was still some magic in Underworld Ascendant, and people just completely shit all over it. And they just were so uh, relentless in their, their attack on other side and their attack on the game. And never once saying, like, you know what, maybe this is a developer that we should kind of stand behind and support because they don't seem to be charlatans or, or shitbags, you know. They did update the game and add in a bunch of stuff when they really didn't have the money or the time or the manpower to, to, to so fans didn't feel cheated. They've tried to do their best. They've tried to do their best to try and make System Shock 3 the best that it can be. I just don't see why... You know, there are legitimately companies out there like EA and others that really don't give two shits about gamers and they will just, you know, or, or the way Bethesda has been behaving recently. And, the, you know, people will still blindly give them their money and give them like, well, I guess it was okay, you know, sort of review scores rather than, you know, kind of telling them to stick it. But then you get like a sort of indie developer like Other Side who's really trying to do something special 
for their fans, and the fans just treat them like shit. So, you know, it. this is what happens, you know? I honestly believe that the backlash from for Underworld Ascendant had a large impact on what is happening with System Shock 3. So we can just hope that System Shock 3 will come out, and we can just hope that in the next... I, I would imagine in the next two weeks to four weeks we will get some clarification from other side as to what their involvement in the game is and i can just we can just hope for the best at this point um i am sort of curious to see what their new ip is i really have no idea what the hell is going on financially for them because you would think that they'd be totally broke by now and totally screwed but apparently they have the funds to be slapping together a new IP, so I am interested to see where that goes, and I'm also really, really hoping that it doesn't just fold as a company, because it, it is kind of looking like it, like that is a possibility, and it's so upsetting, and once again, all of this, in my opinion, stems from the fact of people just being absolutely unforgiving and relentless in their treatment of Other Side and Underworld Ascendant on launch, you know? And, and other side's not blameless. I don't think they were super transparent about the difficulties that they were having. I don't think they were super transparent. But here's the other thing that I don't understand. It seems that when the betas were out, the, the uh, Kickstarter backer betas were being released, uh, people were generally favorable for the game. Like, they, they were generally happy with it. You know, nobody seemed uber pissed or like, what the hell is this? Or, you know, there was none of that attitude before so then all of a sudden on release everyone just you know granted you know the majority of people who played it on release may not have been backers but uh yeah i mean i think other side could have been more clear about managing expectations but you know up until a year before release i i didn't even think that they knew that the game was going to be possible to make at that point so I don't know. They're not blameless, but I still think that they're a company that has shown that they do deserve the benefit of the doubt versus other gaming companies. Um, the people involved um, and the company itself, I think I think people should have given them more the benefit of the doubt or just said, you know what, maybe it wasn't what we wanted. You guys had some financial difficulties. We're going to keep supporting you. Um, if you guys want to run another Kickstarter or, you know, I'm not going to ask for a refund for my Underworld Ascendant game because we want to make sure that System Shock 3 comes out. Uh, but nobody had that attitude, and now look where we are. So, anyways, I will be covering Other Side Entertainment and System Shock 3 as more things develop. I may cut together parts of the previous video to talk about things because that did talk a little bit more about Underworld Ascendant and the update history of that. And, and the fact that it's basically done and they're never going to add stuff to it. So, yeah. But um, anyways, uh, let me know what you guys think, what your impression of the situation with Other Side is. What your, if you Read through the articles, read through the press releases, see if you, what conclusion you come to about the future of System Shock because I'd be really interested to know. Like I said, you know, the... the the positives here that are giving me some hope are that System Shock is still listed on the other side page. It's still listed as their game. Another positive is that um, Tencent, no matter what they do with the game, even if they make it just My Little Pony Island Express, but then they call it System Shock 3, it doesn't matter because Night Dive ultimately owns the IP to System Shock, so... If Night Dive isn't happy with whatever comes out next, they can shop the IP around to a different developer or just develop it themselves in-house, the next System Shock game. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the death of the franchise if Tencent decides to do something stupid with it. The other good news is that this does sort of fall in line with what people were saying that looking, or excuse me, other side was planning on doing with System Shock 3 anyways, which they weren't happy with what they had in-house. So they were shopping around to find a publisher or maybe a co-developer, which is seemingly what they found basically both. Um, and another thing that is sort of uh, encouraging is that while Tencent is trying to get into game development, I think it would be a weird place to start System Shock 3 for them. That's not really the, the vein of game that they are, are most involved with. So they're typically in this kind of situation an investor. 
And in addition to that, if they aren't, if they're doing more than just investing, it, it could be that they're just lending some of their talent and their manpower to help with this. So these are all the encouraging bits, but I just really don't like the how vague the the press release from other side is. And uh, once again, like I said, you know, people have already responded to it on the forums and said like, hey. Just clarify something for us real quick. Are you guys still working on it? Are there still people at other side going to work on the game? And they haven't responded, so that's not encouraging. So I don't know. We'll see. So I, once, like like I said, I will be keeping up with this story. I will be keeping up with this game and everything related to other side entertainment for now. And that's all i got to say about this.